church. It is an absolute joy this morning to welcome you to Otterbein Community Church, a church that offers the love of Christ to this community, and through this community offers the love of Christ to the world. Here's a man, his name was Augustus Montague Toplady. Isn't that an interesting name, Augustus Montague Toplady? Now Augustus uh, contracted TB when he was uh, 34 years old, 36 years old, and he was a Methodist lay preacher at the time, and he <coughs> suffered with that disease two years and then finally uh, was succumbed to tuberculosis. But during that time of his sickness, he wrote a song, and the song, this hymn, reminds us of our total dependence upon God for everything. And I want to invite you to join together in hymn number uh, 361, and we will sing verses 1 and 3 of Rock of Ages. Him right next to hymn number 361, 362, was written by Robert Lowry and William Doan. Uh, it was a very popular hymn in not only the Evangelical United Brethren hymnal, but the United Methodist hymnal as well. Some people were uncomfortable with the hymn because it talks about blood. And blood can be messy sometimes, but in Hebrews chapter 9, it says, without the shedding of blood. There is no forgiveness. I invite you to rise as you are able and join together in singing nothing but the blood of Jesus.
seated. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, I hope you understand it by now. You said it 12 times in the past couple moments. Austin Miles uh, was a photographer and he was in his dark room. And this was in 1912, an important date in the life of us here at Otterbein. This song is as old as Otterbein. And so in 1912, he was in his uh, dark room and he was looking at a blue wall, but as he was there, he was reading scripture. He was reading from John chapter 20, uh, the story of resurrection. And suddenly he saw a dream, a vision, and he saw what it must have been like that moment that Mary encountered Jesus, the risen Christ. And he saw Mary sobbing and he saw Peter and John go to the tomb. He was struck by that and he immediately had to write down his experience. And that has become a hymn known as In the Garden. Tim number 314, I invite you to join together in singing In the Garden. Just with our voices once more, let's do the refrain. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, no other has ever Lord, we ask that you would walk with us this morning, that you'd walk with us as we leave from here today, that you'd walk with us in life, that we would feel your presence both now and always and forever. For it's in Jesus' name that we invite you into this time of worship. Amen.
morning. I'm going to sing the Lord's Prayer in honor of Father's Day, in honor of Him. So please sing along with me if you like, and I'll be praying as I sing, so please pray with me as well. Thank you. Someone said once that music is the language of the soul. Prayer is the language of the heart. It's one of the most sacred moments of our faith. It's conversation with God, sometimes speaking, sometimes listening, but always expecting in hope. It's neither a road exercise nor does it demand a specific order. It comes from the heart perhaps a hurting heart seeking healing, or a joyful or contented heart giving thanks. God listens, not just hears, what we pour out before him. So now I invite each in his own words, each in her own way, to bow your head and pray. Well, God, here we are again before you, the creator of all that is. The universe you spoke into being is beyond our ability to grasp. You arranged the heavens, life on earth, arranged everything in perfect order so that we can survive. Praise to you, holy God, for the air we breathe, the water we drink, even the gravity that keeps our feet firmly on the ground 
as we look up to you in awe. Forgive us for taking so much for granted, Lord. We fail to stop and reflect on the showers of blessing you continually pour out on us. Yes, even life itself. It's hot and we complain, but we fail to give thanks for air conditioned living space rather than huts or shelters built of cast off materials. We get hungry, but we can eat at our leisure. Most people cannot do that. We soil our hands and wash in clean running water. Most people cannot do that. We'd admit it, Lord, we're spoiled by our plenty and need a change of heart. Forgive us, holy God. The world seems like it's falling apart. Wars, hate, division, discord, and rejection seem to be on the rise, and we feel helpless to do anything about it. We pray for the Ukrainian people, the soldiers who are dying, children left fatherless, families torn apart. We earnestly pray for the end of all war so people can live in peace with one another. Your word promises time and again that you are the God of second chances. We confess we're broken and in need of your grace and mercy. We all need second chances and pray that you will hear our prayers and send your spirit to revive us and lead us into a new and different relationship with your son, Jesus. Whether or not he calls us to follow to other places or tasks or to remain in place, prepare us to respond to that call. Grant us the wisdom to make right decisions. We are the church together as were Jesus' friends in that room when he taught them to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Twice this morning already, once from the heart, once from the soul, we have prayed to our Father, our perfect Father, who is in heaven. I want to say a happy Father's Day this morning for all the imperfect fathers, grandfathers and great-grandfathers that are here today. And uh, just to remind you, as, as I am one of the imperfect fathers and grandfathers along with you, is that the Father in heaven revealed to us his love through his son, Jesus Christ. Even though Jesus Christ uh, never had a biological child, he has certainly given us a template of what it means to be a loving parent, whether father or mother. So once again, happy Father's Day. Today is uh, Jan uh, June the 16th. It's the day that we remember that in 1865, in 1865, uh, in Galveston, Texas, the last of the slaves got the news that they were free. There was justice that was served that day. That's the good news. And we celebrate that today, actually tomorrow even too. But justice is still not prevalent. We live in a world of injustice. So it also we want to remind you that we are celebrating Peace with Justice Sunday in our church. This is a, uh, there's an envelope that's in your bulletin this morning that you can make a small donation to employ and deploy our church to be able to go out into the world and speak out as followers of Jesus Christ about injustice and look for ways to bring justice about through peace. Always remind you, you do a lot of good things here, folks. There is a lot of food back there already that will go to St. Paul's in Dayton. As you know, dads and moms right now are having a tough time feeding their kids. 
So anything you give uh, would be great. And uh, Bob Ar Arleach takes that away during the week, and then we get it up to St. Paul's, and then it's where the gathering basket is right now, but we're going to eventually work on moving it out into uh, the narthex there after services. Well, actually throughout the week. So during the week, if you want to, you can bring food into the church office, and we'll make sure that it gets to Bob. We want to remind you that uh, we are emptying our piggy banks. We are bringing in uh, gifts for the children of Nicaragua that feed them as well. And my friend John Tonkin, who uh, prayed with us this morning, John is uh, leading us in that program that we take change for change. My piggy bank, I had the joy of emptying last week. And at the end of last week, we had already collected $350 for this project, which is really good right now. Really good. My piggy bank is filling again. I plan on bringing it back. So I invite you to bring your loose change because it makes a difference in the life of kids here. We make a life of difference in so many ways. I praise God for the givers that you are. And I invite you now to join together in giving as a response to what God has done in our lives. God, you call us 
to spread your love and your goodness throughout the world. You equip us through the gifts that you have given us, spiritual gifts and financial gifts. We ask now that you'd bless them and use them so that we can share your giftedness with the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, you may be seated. Got a question for you this morning. I'd like to see a show of hands. How many of you are demonically possessed? <laughs> do not point to your spouse. <laughs> you didn't see me do that. <laughs> How many of you are demonically possessed? Notice my hand is still raised. Now, granted, I don't turn my head 360 degrees. I don't have the eyes roll back in my head. I don't make that sound like you hear in movies. But I have demons. I have the, I, I'm just going to name some of them. Just some of them. I have the demon of fear. Sometimes I can be afraid, and it gets a hold of me. I have the demon of worry. Worry can get a hold of me sometimes. I have the demon of jealousy and envy, unresolved anger. It could be judgmental occasionally more than occasionally. I fit in well here at Otter Vine because I enjoy some good gossip every once in a while. Oh, not you, huh? I have, <laughs> I have unreasonable desires. I am demonically possessed. Now, I'm going to ask you again. How many of you are possessed by demons? That's more like it. That is more like it. Most of us struggle with demons in our life. Um, twice this morning, once in the heart, once in the soul, we said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I think sometimes when they pray that under our breath, we're going, most of the time. Most of the time. Here's a man who's possessed by demons. Big time. We hear about him in Luke chapter 8. They sailed, being the disciples in Jesus, they sailed on to the country of the Gerasenes, directly opposite Galilee. As he stepped out onto the land, as being Jesus, a madman from the town met him. He was the victim of demons. He hadn't worn clothes for a long time, nor lived at home, he lived in the cemetery. When he saw Jesus, he screamed, fell before him and howled, what business do you have messing with me? You're Jesus, son of the high God, but don't give me a hard time. The man said this because Jesus had started to order the unclean spirits out of him. Time after time, the demon threw the man into convulsions. He had been placed under constant guard and, and, and tied with chains and shackles. But crazed and even driven wild by the demons, he would not, he would shatter the bonds. Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said in the message version, mob or you probably have heard legion before, many, 
many. My name is Mob. He said, because he has many demons that have affl afflicted him. And they begged Jesus desperately not to order them to the bottomless pit. Well, a large herd of pigs was grazing and rooting on a nearby hill. The demons begged Jesus to order them into the pigs. He gave the order. It was even worse for the pigs than for the man. Crazed, they stampede over the cliff into the lake and they drowned. Those tending the pigs were scared to death and they bolted and told their story in, in the town and country. People went out to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had been sent sitting there at Jesus' feet wearing decent clothes and making sense. It was a holy moment. And for a short time, they were more reverent than curious. Then those who had seen it happen told, told how the demonic had been saved. Later, a great many people from, Gerasene, from the Gerasene countryside got together and asked Jesus to leave. And it, it was just too much change, too fast. And they were scared. So Jesus got back into the boat and set off. The man who he had delivered from the demons asked to go with him. But Jesus sent him back. He said, go home and tell everything God did in you. So he went back and preached all over the town, everything Jesus was doing in him. There is no doubt, no doubt that this man was demon-possessed. And there was no doubt that Jesus was offering him a way out, a way to get rid of his demons. Now, if Jesus offered to get rid of your demons, how would you respond? His response was, get away. Don't have anything to do with me. In other words, Believe it or not, as demonically possessed as he was, he had come to be comfortable with his demons. How comfortable are you with your demons? How, you, how willing are you to just to say, you know, this, this, is, uh, this is just how I am. And those of us now who are chronologically challenged, it's easy for us to say, you know, this, this is the way I've always been. Get away. I kind of like my demons just the way they are. I pray, I pray for my demons to go away. I pray that Jesus will take away my need to always worry or worry a lot, and then I go back and worry again. I, I pray, you know, I, I, by the way, I don't do a lot of gossip, <laughs> but you know, every once in a while, there's something juicy I like to hear, and I pray I won't listen to that anymore, but sometimes I do. Even when I realize that uh, that's really destructive. I get envious sometimes, and I pray the God and thank him for everything that I have, then I get envious again. I have unreasonable desires, unresolved anger. And some days I kind of like it. Do you understand? You know where I'm coming from? Some days it's just as easy to just hang on to our demons and say that, you know, that's, that's, just the way I am. But there's no doubt, no doubt that we do not, I'm going to go ahead and say this, I don't think we have as many demons as this man had. You know, I, I, I don't see any of you acting like he acted and, and you know, 
I'm really clear is most of the time I'm finding you to be really, really sweet people. Most of the time. But we, we say we hang on to our demons and our demons not only destroy others, they destroy us as well. And look at how many demons this man had cast out of him by the power of the spirit, by, by Jesus. And we only have a few. Only a few that we could lay before the feet of Jesus and say, Jesus, can't you do something about this? And you know what the answer is. Of course he can do something about it. He can, in fact, even where we are in life right now, he can change us. And when this demonic man is changed, immediately, not immediately, but pretty soon after that, the people who know him, the people who had uh, been around him, their response was to be afraid, to be uncomfortable with his change. Now, here's the thing. If you have demons, and you do, it seems like human nature is you seem to find people who have the same demons that you do, and you hang out together. Yeah. But, but here's the thing is, is uh, if you ask, earnestly ask God to get those demons out of your life, and you get rid of them, Plan on your friends becoming uncomfortable with you. You know, you know, get rid of, I'm picking on gossip this morning, so let's stay with gossip. You know, you, 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 you gossip and, 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 and uh, I see your circles. Not, not, UM, not UMW circles, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, I walk through the hallways and I see what goes on here. And people feed off of that. They feed off of it. And suddenly, if one day you say, you know what, I'm not going to do that anymore. You might find that your friends might be uncomfortable with you. And here's the thing is, is okay, so you know what I, I normally say, what you could say is, well, then find yourself new friends. But notice this man here, he gets this demonic possession that he has, and his first inclination is just to go and to hang out with Jesus. But instead, Jesus tells him this. He says to him that, no, you stay where you are and tell the people the good news, the good news of the love of Jesus Christ, the good news of kindness, the good news of fairness, the good news of, 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 uh, that Jesus has to offer. See, he cast his demons out in the pigs, and the pigs ran off, and, and they drowned. He got rid of his demons, and boy, what a dramatic way to get rid of them. But when you ask God to get rid of your demons, what Jesus asks you to do is then to stay where you are. Maybe even in your circles where You've been around people who seem to have the same demons you do. You know, let's not only pick on gossip. I see worry circles around here, right? I see uh, just, just us, you know, feeding off of each other. And we can begin the process here at Otterbein and then send it out to the world as our mission statement tells us to do of having circles of love instead of circles that destroy others. 
you would imagine that this morning your homework is what? Go home and deal with your demons. Go home and take an honest assessment and say, what is it that for years, for years that I have said to people, well, that's just the way I am. And know that God can do something about that through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then ask God to touch you. Throw your demons into the pigs, into the water. You know, they can run out to the pond out here and maintenance will have to take care of them. But ask God to cast the demons out of your life. Let's pray together. God, we know what we're like. We know what you're like. And you know what we're like inside. And if you can pull those legion of demons out of that man, you can pull the demons out of us. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us. Change our ways. And in offering your love, to actually help others to change. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. once again with just our voices. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that fills my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. His touch can make you whole. His touch can cast out the demons in your life. Again, as you go from this place today, we challenge you to spend a week thinking about what is it that I've hung on to so long that it's time to let go and ask the Holy Spirit to cast that demon out of your life. And then when that's all said and done, to share his love with the world. Go out in Jesus' name. Amen.
빨리 가세요. 
All right. Am I on? Am I on now? Am I on? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. I'm sharing. Hello. Yeah, we're sharing. Hello. Okay, we're on. It's time to go. Yeah, new new people. That's awesome. <laughs> He's got one. <laughs> He's here. Put one over here. Oh, you got one. Everybody's got one. <laughs> yeah, you got enough. Yes, I'd like about fifth quarter after. <laughs> if I can, I'd love to. Hopefully, we will. Oh, def definitely. Yeah, because I want to leave by quarter to 12, and I got to go home and change my clothes. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to start. You're ready, we're ready. We're ready. I've. Oh, those new people, I'm Steve Tawney, and I'm teaching today. I live in Aurora, first floor. So, anyway, our lesson is on page 23. Yes, uh, I don't know you people. Maryland level. Okay, and where do you all live? Yes, where do you all live? Our first, first time. Where do you live? Just arrived 10 days ago. Really? Where are at? What court are you on? Oh, you're in the terraces. Okay, nice to have you here. I lost one here, yay. I don't even see two graves with two, but I'll try to hear. Okay. It's nice to be here. Good, 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 good. Where did you come from? Where were you? I came up from Mason. Oh, from Mason, okay. Way back then, retired from Troy. Really? Hobart? 